So uh, there's another um, available blood product that could be used for transfusion, okay? And that's what the cryo precipitates. So um, the basis of this is this. Sometimes a patient might come to the hospital with a need of just what? One component of blood like that, right? So in the previous times, anytime you need any component of blood, they just give you what? The whole blood, okay? But right now we're just trying to say that medicine is going to a level that if you need one component of blood, they just concentrate that component of blood and give to you. So one of these method is known as a crowd precipitate. So in this crowd precipitate, we'll be looking at it, look at how this method is done, look at the things that can be concentrated from this crowd precipitate. So just get this in mind. Cryo precipitant, okay, or cryo supernatant, or cryo precipitate, sorry, cryo precipitate is from the cryo supernatant that you find cryo precipitate. It's actually found from plasma, okay? So the cryo precipitate is found from plasma. So let's talk about it. Uh, this cryo precipitate is a blood product which is used for transfusion and it's, preserved, it's prepared from what? Frozen plasma, okay? So if you have plasma, you further do some one or two things on the plasma and you can come up with the cryo precipitate, okay? It contains what? You have the fibrinogen, which is the clotting factor. You have the factor eight, okay? Factor eight can be found in this um, cryo precipitate, okay? Factor eight is the anti-hemophilic factor. You have the factor 13. That's a fibrin stabilizing factor. We have the von Willebrand factor can be found in cryo precipitate too. We have the fibronectin, also known as cell adhesion protein. Okay, so if a patient comes to the clinic and they are just deficient in, let me say, factor eight, or they are just deficient in fibrinogen, it's better for you to give them this cryo precipitate that also have other things than trying to give the whole blood that has red blood cells, white blood cells platelets and all the stuff. Do you understand? So that's where medicine is going. Medicine is heading to where you need this specific thing. Okay, we are going to get this specific thing. Okay? So it's actually beautiful arriving, being alive at this time. Okay? So indications for this cryopressive transfusion, that's basically some situations where you just need to transfuse only this cryopressive Okay? If the patient has a hemophilia A, they are deficient in what? factor 8. So they are just bleeding, 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 and they need flat factor 8 for blood clots. You give cryo precipitate. If they have bone Willebrand disease, you give it. If they have a fibrinogen deficiency, you give it. If they have a factor 13 deficiency, you give it. If they have a bleeding disorder like uremic bleeding or liver disease, you give it. If they have massive transfusion, okay, uh, they have cardiac surgery, you give it to support clotting. If they have an autotopic liver transplantation, and you are giving this to what? Support clotting. All right? So what are the contraindications? No absolute contraindications, but it may be cautious in patients with known allergies to blood products, patients with active thrombosis or thrombotic disorders, right? Um, administration. Blood, comp blood compatibility is not required, okay? You don't need to go start doing all those group blood group matching to know if this is blood group A. You are not transmitting whole blood. You are transmitting concentrate, okay? Then, restless factor compatibility is still not needed, right? You infuse slowly over 30 minutes. You monitor for adverse reactions like allergic reactions or transfusion-related acute lung injury and all the stuff, okay? You guys are talking about what? Cryoprecipitate or what? Transfusion. Basically talking about the composition, procedure, advantages. That's all. Basically don't even have much more of this advantage. So that's it. Bye for now.